Hello and welcome to the Play World Cup. I'm James. And I'm Jason. And we are bringing you the second week of matches. Now, just a quick reminder, um, if you'd like to sponsor the tournament or if you'd like to uh, make a donation to the prize pool of the tournament, uh, head off to our website at playworldcup.com.au. We've got a big, brand new, shiny donate button on the sidebar. And um, all the proceeds of those donations goes to Child's Play Charity. Um, So, yeah, thank you for everyone who's donated already. Um, But this is a game, um, Sega vs. Zero Seven. This is the first game out of two, and we are on Discord 4. That's right. So uh, here we have uh, Sega. So we've got Matt from Sega spawning as the yellow Terran. Uh, And down below him is Paz as the purple Protoss. And we have uh, Agentis, who is the teal Zerg. And below him we have the blue Protoss Flomad from Zero Seven. And we did have a little bit of uh, uh, lag, I think, at the start of this match, so hence a little bit of discussion. Some few TT faces. That's right. No QQ faces, though, which is nice. Yeah, too early for QQing. No one's outright crying yet. Everyone's just a little bit, you know, <laughs> crabby. Yeah, a bit, bit sad. Just some tears, but not enough to fully rage yeah. yet. Not yet. Not that yet. That will come later. <laughs> well, I hope so. I hope well, it gets well. Maybe. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see some some full on raging. I mean, I'd be to be honest, I'd be surprised if there was no raging in any StarCraft game. No. I mean, both forces get you know, like both teams get crushed and then they just you know, <laughs> amicably part ways. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm dead. That's all right. That's, yeah, that's fine. You know, I know there's, there's these generally happen. <laughs> generally raging going on um, behind the keyboard, like back at home. Mm-hmm. Might not necessarily type it, but. Secretly, you're at home just swearing to the gods. <laughs> That's what I do when I lose. Smashing your keyboard <laughs> against the desk. Yep. Mm-hmm. Headbutting walls. <laughs> Things like That's what that. all these walls, are, all these holes in walls, are doing around this place. <laughs> That's right. They're not ventil- ventilation holes like I told you earlier. <laughs> Damn it! You lied to me. <laughs> but uh, here in the game, it looks like we're just seeing pretty standard openers from everyone here. So fly mad, getting his uh, gas his gateway on the way with uh, another pylon. In the uh, meantime, Agentis, Agentis has early expanded though, so Agentis has expanded before getting his pool, so that is that is somewhat um, eh, potentially risky, I would say, especially in a two v two where you can get two armies against your uh, undefended natural. The payoff though could mean um, you know double production quite early, and um, you know that you can translate that into quite a you know big advantage early on in a 2v2 but definitely yeah, the risk is very high that you're going to get you know a six maybe seven minute push of units from your opponent <laughs> that's two armies rolled into one in your 2v2s and those expansions can get crushed quite easily <laughs> yeah when you get that that late uh, spawning pool it just means you're without units for you know oh so long really mm. um i will be interested in seeing whether matt uh ends up scouting this expansion uh, if we have a look at Seeger's view, they have not seen it yet, so it will depend on the path this Ooh. SVD takes. Oh. But oh. if no, nope. that SCV is going to get taken out now by that zealot. So uh, no, so Seeger completely unaware of uh, Agentis' expansion. So this could actually work out really well for them. Now here's the thing about expansion uh, on this map with Zerg as well. You can see that the two bases are actually quite far apart down the ramp and uh, it's quite actually difficult to chain those two bases together with the uh, yucky with the creep. sticky creep that's right that's and if you were to kind of run some creep tumors all the way down to your base then you're kind of cutting off the uh, room for your uh, teammate to actually build in yeah you're kind of boxing off flow mat yeah if there was a creep highway down here then you know yeah it severely cuts off the room that flow mat's allowed to build his his structures in and this i mean I, there's one easy expansion in this map for your teams which is the obvious natural expansion both there up the top and down the bottom yeah that's but right but the next one the fourth expansion is actually quite difficult i mean where would you go it yeah this is this is why i personally do not play this map when i play 2v2s i always have it downvoted just because of that exact reason you, you don't really have a safe uh second expansion for the other team member so sort of in my mind, forces you to just go like a really early push just to end the game because otherwise, I don't know, you get one expansion up, but then you expand over here and you know, you're know you so vulnerable to this ramp. It's so far away from the rest of your base. Mm-hmm. Um, although I have seen people take this as their expansion, which is kind of good because We've got some uh, early pressure oh, here. Flomad's <laughs> Zealot running for his life. Uh, a little bit of early pressure by Paz. Is that Zealot going to live to see another day? I think... 
He's so low. Running away, but will Looks like he got we'll out of to it. to see another day. Yeah, that's right. Hero Zealot. Uh, a couple of spine crawlers now coming down from Agentus just for a bit of extra protection in case uh, this push ends up being a little stronger than it is. Well, we're seeing, uh, seeing Seager here take some map control here, take some awareness of the map, you know, kind of testing those defenses early. Yep. They certainly have an awareness. They would have spotted that creep, so they would have awareness of that this was... expansion now as well. Yep. So, oops, wrong one. So, we'll, uh, yeah, so they haven't actually seen uh, the expansion, but by seeing that creep, it's it's... They're pretty confident. That oh, and especially if you jump back to that for a second, you can actually see that there's no creep up the ramp. So it's not coming from right. the top. They haven't expanded out and that creep with creep tumors. It's, com it's coming from down here. So <laughs> obviously that's a symptom of an expansion down there. Definitely. So they're well aware, uh, and that's probably what forced uh, Matt to take this expansion himself. Uh, Agentus's overlord now meeting a uh, miserable demise. But uh, so yeah, so now zero seven full aware that Seagar also expanding. Do have the observer now coming through for Paz, so getting a full scout off of zero seven's base just so they know what exactly what they're up against. Uh, we do have Blink research on the way as well for Flomad. So that's probably going to mean some stalker play a bit further on down yeah. the track. Right now there aren't a lot of stalkers uh, in Flomad's army, but. I'm sure with those three or four gateways he has that there's going to be quite a few coming out in the, in the um, unit production tab. What have we got? And if we do look at this unit tab as well, we see that uh, Agentus with 40 drones, so he's droning up rather hard, but we do only have four Zerglings on the field. So um, dropping those extra spines for a bit of defense. So if, if Seager were to push very early with their Colossus now as well, um, with a... Do we have? Yeah, we do have another one on the way for Paz as well. So, if if Seager are gearing up for an early push, uh, Agentus might be caught in a little bit of trouble. Although we do see some Mutalisks uh, coming from uh, the production for Agentus now. Mm -hmm. um, but with this many Marines and Stalkers, I don't know how well those Mutalisks are going to fare. Yeah, he's really going to have to use them for harassment only. Um, you know, coming up against such a large ball of units. Ooh, that's quite an early expansion to the gold there. That's <laughs> fairly risky. I mean, there's only a very small ball of units protecting that. And um, if they spot that, if they run down the map soon, and it looks like they might be readying for a it push like here. we might be seeing a push here. Yeah, right, I think that timing might be bad here. <laughs> that could prove very problematic for uh, Agentis and Flomad from Zero Seven. 7 That's right. Agentis in full macro mode, almost with 50 drones now, and a third, expan a third base on the way, but... Uh, it comes to push. that excessive macro, I don't know whether Zero Seven are going to have enough forces to deal with this force. Oh, that's uh, got to be cancelled. Is he going to cancel this, ca this hatch, or is he going to lose the 300 minerals? Oh, no, we man. see the cancel. So Good cancel. Saving the 300 minerals, um, he really needs to now use that, that money, that banked money, to make some more units. So we do have those uh, seven uh, mutilists on the field. Looks like they're going to go and potentially do some harass, but... Um, yeah, without without any more units here in this, this base, it's going to make this push really hard to hold. I mean, really, the only option you've got with those Mutalists is to try and draw that army back into their own base by maybe harassing the mineral line. But at this like stage... exactly what he's trying to do, but yeah. those missile turrets are well and truly defending those Mutalists. And this are. push doing uh, extreme damage. So Paz's Observer in their base the, the whole time, scouting their army and just seeing that... They were zero seven were very light in on the units, uh, and that this was a perfect time for Seager to push. Yeah, that observer in the base really spelt their undoing there. Um, when it's very difficult for them to quickly, um, you know, get an army together as they're being pushed upon. Um, the cancel from that gold expansion kind of cost them a bit of time and Definitely. focus away from you know what they were doing, which is you know kind of trying to build their army up here, and ultimately kind of led led to their undoing here. Definitely, and yeah, the, the biggest biggest downfall here was that there's just not enough units to deal with this push. Um, maybe focusing a little bit too much on, on getting that heavy macro, which, if left unchecked, would have put 07 in a, in a fantastic position in the late game. But and there's the GG as there well. There's the GG from Agentis. Um, we see uh, Flomad's base getting torn apart by these Marines as well. So uh, this, this first game ha has now gone to uh, Sega Studios Australia. And in the series, Sega actually took this one out 2-0. Um, so thanks very much for watching. Um, make sure you follow us on Twitter where we're at, at PlayWellCup. Um, or visit the website at PlayWellCup.com.au. And uh, thanks for watching. See you guys.